Good afternoon. Hi, you're awake. Excellent. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here representing Ciencia Puerto Rico, the Wonder Collaborative, and iBiology. The stories that were told reinforce misconceptions about scientists of color and from underrepresented backgrounds, like we don't exist. There's just not enough black women physicists or Latina coders to be hired for X or Y. We are tokens, like where you're the only Latina in your department, but they want you for every PR picture and video. <laughs> or that we're underdogs. We overcame such great challenges to make it in science. This, these misconceptions do a disservice to these underrepresented scientists and scientists of color, but they also do a disservice to the scientific enterprise. So at the Wonder Collaborative, which is a new science communication initiative, II Biology, we decided to take storytelling, to challenge these misconceptions through the series um, that features three scientists so far, Esteban Gonzalez Burchard, who is at the University of California, San Francisco, Rebecca Calisi Rodriguez, who is at the University of California, Davis, and Manu Prakash, who is at Stanford University. You can watch the videos that we've released so far there. And what we set out to do with telling the stories of these three people was to really flip the <coughs> narratives about scientists of color and scientists from underrepresented backgrounds from they succeeded in spite of their backgrounds to they succeeded because of their backgrounds. We really, through these stories, wanted to explore how their life experiences, their cultures, who they are, lead to the innovations that they're doing in their research. We also wanted to change misconceptions about scientists. We know that scientists are perceived as competent, but not as friendly or warm. You know, scientists are often more comfortable with data and numbers than emotions. There's these stereotypes that we can't show emotions because science is objective and apparently we're not human. And so with the stories that we're telling, we, again, wanted to flip those narratives and change those misconceptions. So I'm going to show you two clips. The first one is of Manu Prakash. He actually both are from Manu Prakash. The first one, he is explaining his research. This was early on in the editing process of the video. And what we study in my lab are animals called Can you pacozones, turn up the volume? Which are an anomaly. Thank you. They didn't get the memo for a lot of how much of the other living systems evolved. So they're extremely simple. And when I say simple, I mean really, really simple animals. These animals have no neurons. They have no muscles. They're completely flat, so they're two-dimensional in most of their geometry. So we can image every single cell in this and in its entirety. And to me, this is the very first time that we've been able to study an organism at that depth, at cellular resolution. You know, imagine thinking about if you could watch every single cell in a mouse. I mean, that would just be insane because that's trillions of cells. And then we can dial in and apply this idea where we can grow animals with different sizes. So we can ask this question, how does complexity of an organism scale if I watch animals that are only 100 cells, or a million cells, or a billion cells for that matter? And eventually, hopefully from that learn, how did cells learn to cooperate with each other? Which is a really fundamental question if you ask in any system, any complex system, if you look at an organ, for example, you have incredible cooperativity that has evolved over time. But we really have very little means of questioning and perturbing that cooperativity. So in this video, he's explaining the research, some of the research that he does in the lab. And you know, you might, if you're a biologist, you might get a gist of what he's saying. But he's jargony, he's a little subdued, and Manu is incredible. He is a TED Fellow, he's a MacArthur Genius Grant Award winner. Um, so he 
but he's a little subdued. Like we, when we were thinking about these stories, we really want viewers to connect with the emotions, with the excitement, with that sense of wonder and curiosity. So as we were watching this in the editing room, actually, Elliot Kushner, who's on the panel, who likes to blow things up, he said, well, you know, where, where does he light up? Like he's, this is, we're not really connecting with him. So let's take a step back and think about, as he's explained in this research, we did like a four hour interview with him, is there a place where he's saying exactly the same thing, but he is lighting up? And so this is what we came up with. I often feel in science we are attracted to the exotic, but sometimes curiosity drives you to the mundane. And I think I'm very much, I like the mundane, because I think when you uncover a layer in the mundane and you find something quite puzzling, that tells you that we actually don't understand the mundane. My lab studies how cells actually become organisms. Individual cells started sticking to each other maybe 700, 800 million years ago to form these ensembles of groups of cells. But eventually these groups of cells had to differentiate and really do complex functions for these ensembles to become what we call complex multicellular life. It's hard to decipher how that got started. Now, of course, there's music that helps with the emotion, but he's much more concise, he's much more animated, and you feel like you not only understand what he's doing, but you get a little peek behind why he's so excited about the science that he is doing. We know that stories can shift stereotypes, and so with this series of Background to Breakthrough videos, we're actually asking, can they change perceptions about the value of diversity in science? Can they change perceptions of how someone's ethnic and cultural background can contribute to success in science? Now, the assessments that we've done are really preliminary, but from the data and the comments and the anecdotes that we've heard, yes, we are changing perceptions with these stories. So I really believe that stories and storytellers, we can spark change. And what we're doing with these series of videos is showing how people belong in science and how science belongs to them and how they can use their identities and their cultures to make significant contributions to scientific knowledge. Thank you.